Hello everyone, Peter Serretta here from SlashFilm.com and I am with... Steven Weintraub with Collider.com. And we're here in Las Vegas at Caesars Palace Casino at CinemaCon, which used to be called Show West. It's the exhibitor convention where the movie theater exhibitors get to see presentations from the studios. Blah, 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 you've seen this before. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sony Pictures held their uh, presentation tonight and they showed off their next uh, year and a half of movies or so. They, they showed a lot of stuff and I, I, I have to so say... So much stuff that we have a list of films here that I don't know how we're going to get through, but we're going to try to do it in a rapid fire fashion. Yes, absolutely, but I will say that uh, one of the frustrating parts about Sony was they did not stop during a part of their panel. They just showed clip after clip after clip yeah. after clip. So all of us were sitting there ready to tweet and it just couldn't happen. Yeah. It was, uh, it was like to quote another uh, successful franchise. Fast and Furious. Yeah. So we're going to give you reactions to all these films. Uh, let, let's just get into it. So sure. let's start off with uh, what's that first one? The um, you want to do Perfect Guy? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, you do Perfect Guy. Uh, Screen Gems movie uh, looks like a stalker film. Uh, let's move past that. We'll do Concussion. Will Smith. Concussion. Will Smith. It looks like one of those movies where it's a transformation. He's doing an accent. Um, I, it was one scene with him giving a speech in front of like a, a, a crowd of people, uh, some notable actors in, in that crowd. Um, it seems emotional. I mean, it was hard to gauge from the scene, but his performance seemed uh, yeah, it's, informative. It's, it's Will Smith as a serious actor, and it's a very uh, timely piece because uh, everyone knows about the NFL and concussions and I believe even today they announced where uh, former athletes in the NFL are going to get uh, paid money because yeah. of the concussion thing and it's something that's going to be in the limelight and it's very well timed. And the next film's Fifth Wave starring Chloe, Chloe Moritz. Exactly. Um, it starts out looking like it's just like a, a teenage romance kind of thing but then we quickly reveal that there's something coming in outer space uh, past Mars, and, and it, it's it's a uh, it's an alien invasion. Yeah, film. alien invasion film. But it seems like it, it's kind of like an alien invasion film, uh, young adult Asian oh, alien that's invasion. That's a very yeah, yeah. exactly. It's young adult alien invasion. Uh, listen, I'm a big fan of Chloe's work. I think she's a very talented actor. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, it looks like a, a it, it looks like a young adult yeah. alien invasion movie. The thing is, it looks uh, interesting because it doesn't look like the rest of the the ones we've seen seen thus far. But and I know the effects were very rough in what we saw, but it, it, it looks um, not as epic as the other stuff. It's more of a personal story. Sure. I mean, yeah. we it was, listen. Rough footage, very quick. Uh, I like her, um, but all you need to know is young adult. Alien Invasion, and I think you yeah. you said it very very accurate. Let's okay. move on to Xmas. Yeah, that was probably the most impressive thing I saw here. This is Jonathan Levine did the Wackness. He did uh, is that the cancer one. It was like oh I my god, cancer, wait, oh, uh, <laughs> you're putting me wait. It's with, with Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yes, uh, and Seth Rogen. It, it's yes. basically the team is back together in this. Oh my god, it, it, I can't, it's I can't a final <laughs> That's really bad. 50 dude. 50. It was, that, <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank because you. it was a bad name. Um, so you. the team is back together, and it's about a bunch of friends getting back together an annual uh, uh, Christmas it. trip in, right. in, in, in Manhattan. It, I love Christmas movies. I love movies in Manhattan. I love Christmas movies in Manhattan. And this looks like an awesome one. Well, it looks like a, it, it's a absolute R rated comedy yeah. that features Seth Rogen, Jessica Gordon Levitt, Anthony Mackie. Uh, with, uh, I mean, the scene that they showed us tonight featured uh, them, Seth, doing some hardcore drugs, which will be unnamed, and the reactions of what happens with doing said drugs. Anytime you mix in drugs and Seth Rogen, it's going to be good. There'll drugs. be a trailer out for this somewhat soon, and uh, there's an awesome moment, which is a call, is a take on the uh, the piano sequence from Big, which is just yes. amazing. Every, everyone in the theater was laughing out loud, yeah. really funny stuff. Absolutely. Um, and oh, and it opened. Well, I was gonna, okay. just going to say do it, do it. It, it opened with a great quote from the, from the team that almost brought you the interview, which everyone was laughing yeah. about. Um, Especially this crap, because yeah, they, they're all... They, yeah, yeah. Uh, really good looking footage, very funny stuff, and now we jump into Spectre, which is this new James Bond movie you possibly what, might have heard of. What is James Bond? No, okay, the, yeah, you got it. It's the 24th entry in the franchise. Uh, what was cool is that uh, everyone has seen the teaser trailer. Uh, they showed us tonight a sequence uh, that takes place after the opening. If, you, uh, if you're not familiar, the opening of the movie, it takes place with the Day of the Dead sequence in Mexico City. It's a 12 to 15 minute massive spectacle of action. And shortly after that uh, is where the sequence we saw takes place, which has Monty Penny 
James Bond talking. I will not reveal what happens because they asked us not to reveal things because it is very much... Uh, uh, spoiler. Yeah, huge spoiler. Um, but it was very well done and it, it, it absolutely is spoiler filled. And then it cuts to a montage uh, of stuff that we saw from the movie. Absolutely looks like a mat. I mean, I've heard that the budget on this new James Bond movie yeah. is pretty high. It, and it The montage like- impressed me. The scene, not so much. I'm not like, I don't know, I didn't know what was going on. It's, it See, I, like, if, you know, the thing yeah. is, I did that set visit, yeah, so and I so I know exactly where the scene takes place in the yeah. movie. But I, I feel like if, if, if you're, if you like James Bond, you're going to see this movie. If you don't like James Bond, you're not going to see this movie. You're, nothing is going to change your mind. Sure. I feel like at this point. The, the, so let's just move on. Right, but, but for me, the footage looked... Listen, I'm a huge uh, Daniel Craig fan of yeah. uh, playing James Bond, and Sam Mendes uh, gave us a video introduction. Footage looked awesome yeah. for me. And uh, moving yeah. on to uh, Goosebumps. Goosebumps, based on the R.L. Stein uh, series of books that we all read as a kid. Uh, not all of us, but we, the most Some important thing uh, that they made, not to interrupt, uh, 400 million copies have been sold. Yeah. So a lot of us. Yes. Um, anyways, this looks like a, a throwback to the Amblin era, like horror movies, like Joe Dante and whatever. But it's a family uh, horror adventure kind of thing. It looks like it could be fun. I don't know. Jack Black, kind of iffy. Everyone, whatever. Uh, one thing that bothers me is all the monsters are like these CG creations, and it could be like early work. You know, it might not be done. Uh, but that's the only thing that worries me about that so far. I interviewed Rob Letterman and Neil Moritz, the producer, director, director, producer of the movie and they said they did two test screenings. The first one scored a 95, the second one scored a 96. If you're not familiar with what those numbers mean with test screenings, those are fucking high numbers. So there is no doubt this movie is good if it scored those numbers on two test screenings. Um, For me, the footage looked uh, like, it looks like a very fun, as you said, Amblin 80s movie. Uh, I hope it is, and Jack Black looks like he's having a blast, and uh, it looks like a like a Night at the Museum esque kind of movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, now we have about Pixels. Pixels, right? Pixels, directed by Chris Columbus, who you know wrote. Goonies, and he wrote um, uh, uh, Gremlins. Yeah, he did. Gremlins uh, directed Home Alone, and, direct, and you know, our childhood was part, for, partially for, first Columbus. two Harry Potter movies. Yeah, um, and he hasn't uh, done a lot that has like I feel like connected with the mainstream public since Harry Potter. Uh, I feel like this might have the potential to do it. Like seeing this, um, it, it you know these retro eight uh, bit or. Yeah, eight bit. Yeah, yeah. Eight bit. Um, arcade games are kind of attacking the U.S. and it, it's this alien invasion movie, but the it looks so cool and it, it, it's like you know, I know you love arcade games. Make no mistake, this is yeah. All, listen, I will fully agree with all of you out there who are watching this right now that Adam Sandler has made some bad choices. I know. This is not one of them. I am absolutely on board with this movie, hook, line, and sinker. I'm a huge '80s arcade fan. I absolutely love Peter Dinklage, who's basically playing Billy yeah, Mitchell. he's playing the, 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 the champion of Donkey Kong, and he has the mullet just like Billy he Mitchell. He is playing Billy Mitchell. If you've seen The King of Kong, you know who he's playing. Yeah. And uh, so it has Josh Gad, Adam Sandler, uh, Peter Dinklage. It has the 80s characters, and it has crazy-looking animation with Chris Columbus doing an 80s movie, essentially, like with that yeah. magic. I am fucking all in on this movie. I can't say enough about it. I, I, I cannot wait to see it. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite movies of all time is Almost Famous. I love Cameron Crowe, and one of one of the things we saw was like extended trailer, extended trailer footage, whatever, uh, for Aloha, his next movie. Um, I'm a big fan of Cameron Crowe, so I'm in. I, I want to see it, but nothing I've seen thus far has really impressed me. That's very interesting because I'm in the exact opposite. I think Cameron has made some mistakes recently, yet I really feel like the scenes I've seen, I've seen a lot of footage recently from Aloha, and all of it I've been really more, every bit of footage I see, I've been getting more and more like, oh my God, I need to see this movie. And it's probably from the cast. It's Bradley Cooper, oh, the cast is awesome. Emma Stone. I think I just don't understand what the characters are and where they are. Like It seems like it's a little bit more complex than your usual kind of like that film. Well, listen, um, he, yeah. Cameron Crowe is known as for doing char- great character work and great dialogue, and all the footage I've seen recently yeah. as, is exactly I mean, I'm in that. no matter what, but um, I don't know. It didn't, didn't impress me. It's, it's so interesting because I'm, I'm, 
I'm on the other side of this yeah. one. I'm really like, oh my god, I really want to see this movie. Okay, the film that you wanted to talk about was Ricky and the Flash. <laughs> I have nothing to say, so we'll leave the floor with you. Uh, Meryl Streep plays in... I'm going to check my text message. Oh, stop. Meryl Streep is the star of this movie, and he's checking his text messages. I got a Snapchat. That it's, it's literally outrageous. Uh, she plays an older rock star who Rick Springfield is in uh, her band. I don't think he plays Rick Springfield. And this is, uh, this is crazy. Um. <laughs> and he, uh, she, her family has an... Uh, I'm going to take a photo of us. Doing, okay, keep on going. It's, it's li- it, you see what I'm dealing with on a regular basis here. This is literally what it's like off camera, except he's finally revealing the, his true self. Uh, Okay. Uh, she plays an, uh, an older rock star whose family has some issues, uh, and she comes back to basically get involved, and she's never been there for her family. So uh, she has to deal with, you know, not really connecting with her kids. You know, she was away for their entire lives. And uh, from what I understand, Meryl sings. She really plays guitar. She, I guess, in one of the solos, ripped up her fingers. And anything with Meryl Streep, obviously, I want to see. And it's going to be interesting to see her playing an aging rock star. Saying that, it looks like a, a different version of August Osage County. You know, like where she play. you know what I mean? It's like a family dynamic. I, I know what you're saying. I, I, and I'm not saying this movie looks bad. It doesn't look bad. It just it looks like it's not for me. Sure. Do you know what I mean? It's not for me. Sure. I mean, you're angry, you know? You know <laughs> no, I mean, it's just not for me. I wanted to take it off this list, but Steve wanted to talk about it. Well, because it's fucking Meryl Streep. Okay. Mer- yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway. So Let's uh, move on to. The wave? No, uh, no I wrote wave. that wrong. The oh. walk. <laughs> the walk. <laughs> the walk. <laughs> like, what is the wave? I, I wrote a list of n- names yeah. really fast before we were going to do this because Sony did so many things we would never remember. And I was writing so fast, I wrote the wave. But it's the walk. Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, Robert Zemeckis, uh, the director of my favorite film of all time, Back to the Future. I heard that's a good uh, movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. He's directed some awesome films. Uh, he got stuck a few years ago in this this uh, computer-generated performance capture uh, phase. And I think this is... He's finally back to live action, and this combines both of them. I feel like it has some, some great CG combined with the live action of this true story of... Uh, this guy that basically walked a tightrope between the Twin Towers in New York City. Yes. And um, the scenes that are up there look breathtaking, even though you know that CG, it looks it do, it do, epic in, in, it in doesn't, scope. It, that's the great thing, is it doesn't look CG. It looks like you're there. Yeah. Um, I have heard that, and it looked already when we were seeing it tonight, that the you're going to want to see this movie in IMAX 3D. And from what I understand, there's going to be sequences where, and we saw a little of it tonight, where you're walking, where you see the camera looking down, where he's on the rope, walking between the World Trade Center, and you're going to get that feeling of deja, like that spinning yeah. vertigo kind of thing, because it's gonna, you're going to look like you're seeing a hundred yeah. stories down. Zemeckis yeah. says that you're going to want to see this on the biggest screen possible. I absolutely And agree. I am going to want it. Yeah, 100%. It, uh, I think the footage looks great, and listen, huge Joseph Gordon-Levitt fan, um, and I'm so happy to see Zemeckis doing yeah. live action. And, and Gordon-Levitt is, looks like he's, he has a... It looks different than his other roles. Oh, yeah, he's doing a yeah. French accent, and it's based... Like, uh, if you see the documentary The Wire, uh, it's based on that story. But let's move on to uh, Money Monster. Yeah, Money Monster is... Directed by Jodie Foster, and it's kind of um, George Clooney plays basically the Mad Money guy on CNN or whatever he is. I don't know what that channel is. Uh, and basically, a guy takes him hostage, a guy that like lost all his money. Uh, played. Uh, we should also say it's star Jack O'Connell plays Jack O'Connell from Seventy One, yeah. which if you haven't seen, you really need to see. And Unbroken plays the guy who takes Clooney hostage. Yeah. Julia Roberts plays the TV producer. And uh, I think it's basically a film that, that talks about the 2008 collapse, money, and, you know, what's really going on, and how the people on TV are... Which, which all the way you said, it could be very boring, but it seems like this is a tense, you know, dramatic situation because it's, you know, this hostage situation. Well, on top of that, George yeah. Clooney, uh, you know, does, let's be honest here, he picks socially relevant, important films to try to star in, and this looks to be one of those movies. Yeah. That, and I believe it takes place around the 2008 economic collapse. I would bet. And, uh, I mean, obviously I want to see it. It's, it's a no-brainer. Um, moving past all that, uh, Sony flashed a number of logos very quickly on the yeah. screen. And when you flash logos as a studio, it basically means we're in development on this movie uh, more soon. 
Uh, so for video game fans, they did Uncharted, which is yeah. for a lot of video game people, that's going to star Mark Wahlberg, as far as I know. Yeah, the Da Vinci Code sequel, uh, Inferno. I think we actually saw some footage from that, too. Yeah, I think so. Um, uh, for Equalizer fans, they did Equalizer 2. They've always imagined this as a franchise with Denzel Washington, and they've been in development on a sequel since before the first one. So, And not only did we see a logo, but we saw Angry Birds footage, them, like a se- computer animated kind of sequence with them. I don't know. Uh, I mean, it was like very quick. Okay, like I was going to say. Uh, we saw some Smurfs. Um, but honestly, there were like, it was like logo, 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 yeah. logo, logo. And I think I forgot a few things. Yeah. The, um, the Smurfs look a lot more like the original Smurfs with like, you know, it looks like it's in their world with the, you know, yeah, mushrooms. The, this is an all animated Smurfs. Yeah. There's no, there's no humans. They're going into the thing. And uh, for big news, which I believe by now, if you're yeah. watching this, you've already heard of it. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller are going to be doing an animated Spider-Man movie uh, that comes wait, out. In, wait, who are Phil Lord and Chris Miller? Uh, they might have made some movies you've heard of called the Lego Movie. Uh, they might have done 21 and 22 Jump Street. They might have uh, directed the pilot of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. They also might have done the pilot for uh, Last Man on Earth. I mean, basically, they only do awesome. Yeah. You know, so if their names are involved, they're apparently, from what we understand, they're, they've come up with a story, they're going to be producing, and... They're writing the treatment, and they're producing at this point. Right. Who knows what they're actually going to do, because they're also doing the Lego movie, but uh, what's interesting about this is obviously this has been in development for a little while because you don't just all of a sudden announce it. Um, well, when, it, when the Sony leaks happened in December, this was one of the leaked things was there's conversations with, with both of them about an animated Spider-Man movie. So, I, I purposely did not pay attention to those things. Well, that's because, true because I linked it in my article. Right. Uh, I was against covering the Sony leak stuff because it was literally terrorism. Yeah. And uh, I, but I, so I... It doesn't matter. The point is now we can talk about it. And anything they do, I'm very interested in. Um, Rothman said on stage, Tom Rothman, the new head of Sony, that this movie would take place with the other movies. But then the press release came out and said the movie would be its own thing. Yeah. So there's a little bit of confusion right now about where and when this movie takes place. And uh, as a true head of uh, a studio, he said it was going to be fucking awesome. Yes. And uh, that's and, all we know. But by the way, I believe that yeah. because Phil Lord and Chris Miller are doing it, and they have yet to disappoint me. So there's no pressure there. Okay, Steve, it's been 17 minutes. We went through I don't know how many films. That's a lot of films. One, at two, least three, at least four, six. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven films. We can wrap up. I think we should wrap. Right. Up. We, we're covering Fox and Universal tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you can find more of my work on Collider and as Collider Frosty on. Uh, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, you can find me at SlashFilm.com and on Instagram and Twitter, uh, SlashFilm. Cool. Thank you for watching and uh, see you tomorrow.